Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 5 for June the 30th, 2019. We begin a new unit today, Unit 2, entitled A Heartfelt Covenant. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is entitled Attitude Check. Our devotional reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 61, uh, verses 1 through 8. Uh, background scriptures taken from Matthew uh, chapter 5 verses 1 through 12 and we'll be studying today from uh, Matthew uh, chapter 5 uh, verses 1 through 12. Our key verse reads, Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And that's taken from Matthew uh, chapter 5 verse 12 from the NIV translation our lesson aims today number one is to explain the irony uh, in the uh, Beatitudes second to marvel at the values taught by Jesus in their complete reversal of the world's values and then thirdly to pursue the value system taught by Jesus and to claim the blessings of belonging to Christ's kingdom we have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, Jesus Began to Teach. Our second outline is entitled, Blessed. And then our third outline is entitled, A Reason to Rejoice. I am so happy and thankful um, to God for having this opportunity to be able to share the lesson with you as we continue. Uh, our online uh, Sunday school lessons. It is a blessing to be a part of this and uh, to be able to uh, encourage those who are listening. Uh, we hope that you will uh, follow us uh, with your Bible and uh, be prepared to uh, take some scripture references that we want to share with you today. But it is a blessing to um, uh, to be able to share this lesson with you uh, from a very familiar book to all of us, The Gospel According to Matthew. Uh, I'd like to begin today uh, just pointing out some, um, some base, if you will, or some principles about the book of Matthew uh, that will help us to, uh, to understand uh, the writing, but so Matthew is a Jewish gospel and it's it's uh, rooted in Old Testament prophecy relating to the coming of Messiah King and his kingdom. So since this gospel is Jewish, the key to the interpretation of Matthew is an understanding of God's program for Israel and her Messiah. So this involves the great focal prophecy of Israel's future. Uh, earthly kingdom under Messiah. It was rejected at the first advent, but it is to be established uh, at the second advent. I want you to look at Acts chapter 1 verse 6. So the theme of Matthew is the Savior, King, and his kingdom. I also want to make mention um, uh, that Matthew um, like all the Gospels, his purpose is to convey authoritative teaching and um, about Jesus, uh, whose coming marks the fulfillment of God's promises and the presence of God, his, his kingdom. So Matthew makes no division between history and theology. Uh, his history is the basis of his theology, and the theology gives its proper meaning to uh, to the history. So Matthew makes extensive use of fulfillment references to the Old Testament. His citations are not presented as isolated predictions and fulfillments, but as proof of the fulfillment of all the expectations of the Old Testament. So Matthew understood the, the Old Testament uh, in terms of uh, uh, what God intended to do with Israel uh, and how he intended to bring Christ uh, through the human uh, lineage 
uh, of David. Uh, and you can see that in Matthew uh, uh, chapter 1. Uh, but we want to uh, get into this biblical context. And there are a couple of points that I want to make from our lesson standard. And then we'll move quickly into our uh, outline. So uh, some Bible scholars have called Jesus Sermon on the Mount. And that would be from Matthew uh, chapter 5 uh, through chapter 7. His platform for his coming kingdom. So Matthew sets the stage for Jesus' discourse in chapters 1 through 4. We also note the parallels to Jesus' Sermon on the Mount to Moses' receiving of the law. Uh, so, however, uh, they differed in that unlike Moses, Jesus was God. Uh, the son and could not only present teachings that would reveal sin he would also be the once and for all sacrifice uh, to pay the penalty of sin so uh, from our lesson standard as we get into these uh, beatitudes that word uh, beatitude does not occur in the Greek New Testament uh, but it comes into English through Latin and means a blessing. So uh, the Beatitudes in the Bible begin uh, with the word bless. Uh, the basis for God's blessing is his love. And the person whom God blesses receives an expression of his love. Whether the person knows it or not. Um, but blessings often uh, have both a present and a future fulfillment. So if one is blessed, the benefits are evident now uh, or will come soon. Unlike a curse, a blessing is never earned, but it's granted by God according to uh, his good pleasure. And you might see some reference in Psalm uh, number 8. But we want to get into uh, Jesus' teaching here from uh, Matthew chapter 5. And again, uh, I want to... Uh, just share quickly the um, the theme of Matthew chapter 5 uh, is found in Matthew uh, chapter 5 verse 20. Uh, this kind of summarizes the uh, entire Sermon on the Mount. But the Bible says, For I say unto you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will but you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. So that is the theme of uh, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. But let's begin today from um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. As our first outline uh, presents to us, Jesus began to teach. And I want to read this from the NIV translation. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down uh, his disciples came to him and he began to teach them so we want to make sure that we understand that this uh, this sermon if you will is directed uh, to Christ's own disciples um, and Jesus is um, teaching principles of the kingdom of, of heaven or ethics if you will but after the events recorded in Matthew 4 uh, Jesus was at the height of his popularity so people wanted to know who this teacher and healer was so some were sincere however most were just curious seeking healing and were hopeful that uh, he was the promised Messiah uh, so it was not a surprise that Jesus saw a huge crowd. So he went up on the mountainside. Uh, and so once on the mountainside, Jesus sat down. Um, but from the uh, context here uh, of Matthew chapter 4 and 5, his disciples refers to Jesus' followers, not just his inner circle. But yes, we know of Judas Iscariot's betrayal. But no doubt some of Jesus' followers were in the crowd yelling crucify him later. But the common teaching arrangement in ancient Israel was uh, a teacher disciple. So unlike today's schools, uh, teaching was more like an apprenticeship. So pupils learned from both the teacher's words 
um, and deeds. So those in the crowd were eager to hear what Jesus had to say. Uh, with everything in order, Jesus began to teach them. It's very important that uh, uh, the Bible serves for us if we can understand. Uh, it serves as instruction for us. Um, Jesus is teaching uh, individuals principles uh, and we have to do that today. This is uh, uh, educational uh, for all of us. We have to learn the principles uh, from God and we have to learn God's standards. But if you uh, kind of go back uh, with me, if you will, when we're talking about Israel uh, and the Lord delivering them from Egyptian bondage, uh, uh, at the hands of Moses and then Moses uh, bringing the children or leading the children out we find the children of Israel uh, uh, being given instructions as we, we have uh, the Old Testament provides for us everything that Moses was tasked to teach the children of Israel and if you go back and look at all of the commandments the ordinances the statutes uh, 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 all of the uh, uh, principles that God wanted to share with with Israel coming out of Egypt they didn't know any of these things and so uh, uh, God wanted to make sure that uh, his people his covenant people were entering into a relationship with him under different circumstances uh, with different guiding principles uh, that's what laws are. They are guiding principles. They help to shape the community and they help to shape the environment and they, they help to shape the conduct of, of, of the people or the community, if you will. And, and I, I, I'm saying that because this is what Jesus is doing here. Uh, he is teaching principles to shape the people, to shape the conduct, to help his disciples understand uh, what a blessing is and where it comes from and and so this blessing uh, that God pronounces uh, uh, through Jesus Christ uh, in light of how people receive it uh, helps us to understand that God has thought about all of the things that would encompass life or that would uh, uh, surround or, or come up on his people if you will and so as we get a little bit further into this sermon, uh, we can see that the people uh, uh, in life, disciples, we have a tendency to go through many, many conditions. Uh, but because of our position and because of the teachings of Christ, we don't have to feel discouraged. Uh, uh, we don't have to feel as though we have been abandoned. Uh, we don't have to feel as though uh, we don't have any hope even though our circumstances uh, don't uh, necessarily look like that that we are blessed and so I think in, 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 in this culture that we live in now uh, we have a different interpretation of blessings uh, we like to say that blessings are associated with things that that allow us to look like we're blessed uh, that allow us to look like that we're on top of the world and that we have not been affected uh, but things necessarily don't provide uh, the blessing that uh, uh, Jesus is teaching here uh, our blessing comes through knowing Christ and the pardon of our sins our blessing truly comes uh, when we understand the relationship that we are in uh, through Jesus Christ so we want to just make sure that we understand that just because you have some things uh, some tangible things does not necessarily mean you are quote unquote blessed though some may argue that that is a sign of a blessing but perhaps you need to read this sermon in its entirety from Matthew chapter 5 to uh, uh, chapter 7 and you will see that it covers people who may not look like they are blessed. So we'll, we'll talk about that as we go along. But the question is asked here, what are your thoughts on the following statement? Modern churches emphasize worship more than Christian education on Sundays. 
So again, uh, our worship uh, uh, is important. It is critical. Uh, but but we do need to understand why we are worshiping, why we are praising God, why are we uh, uh, feeling the way that we do. And so this is what uh, education, Christian education, Christian doctrine uh, plays a huge part. Uh, when we are worshiping God, praising God, uh, these things take on a, a two-pronged approach, if you will, uh, 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 our praise and worship uh, is, is, is retrospect. It takes a look back at the things that God has done and who he is. And, and then it's prospect. It looks forward to what God has promised that he will do or what we are currently experiencing uh, 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 by God and through his love through Jesus Christ. So there is a huge emphasis on, on worship. And, and, and that is to be noted. But we also want to couple our worship with understanding, with education. So we want to keep that in mind. But our second outline is entitled, Bless. This is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 10. And uh, again from the NIV translation. The Bible says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Verse 7, blessed are the merciful, for they shall or they will be shown mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall or they will see God. Verse 9, blessed are the peacemakers, um, for they will be called children of God. And then uh, verse 10, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So uh, as Jesus teaches these principles, and I was looking at this, uh, and, and we noted uh, these beatitudes, uh, uh, eight of them, if you will, uh, each begins with the word bless. Uh, also, uh, uh, although there are nine instances of bless uh, in verses 3 through 11, the final bless refers to Jesus' listeners, not believers in general. So we may subdivide uh, the Beatitudes into two groups of four. So the first four focus on believers' relationship with God, while the second, focus, uh, second four focus on believers' relationship with uh, with others, so in essence, the Beatitudes provide amplification uh, for Jesus' teaching on the two greatest commandments. I want you to look at Matthew chapter 22, uh, verses 37 through 40. But agape love it was at the center of both, first to God and then to others. So when we look at uh, the first Beatitude, it deals with poor in spirit. Um, but we see that although uh, some Bible scholars equate this phrase with monetary possessions, uh, its focus is actually on those who have given up spiritually. And I just want to pause right there because uh, this happens to us as believers. Uh, even though uh, we are surrounded by things, things of this world, circumstances cause us uh, to give up in our spirits trials sometimes cause us to give up spiritually. Unanswered prayers uh, sometimes uh, cause us to give up spiritually. And so uh, the context for this beatitude is found in uh, Isaiah 61 verses 1 through 3 and fulfilled in Jesus' first coming uh, in Luke chapter 4. But uh, having endured exile and now subjugation to various foreign powers, they uh, were at the point of powerless, uh, powerlessness and, and hopelessness. So when we look at Israel um, and we look at the, the, uh, the military campaigns, the two uh, biggest ones uh, that we have in the Old Testament uh, being the Assyrian and the Babylonian campaigns, uh, that the children of Israel uh, uh, perhaps had given up. We see some reference in 
uh, uh, Psalm 137 if you might uh, look at that at your leisure but again sometimes uh, uh, as I said circumstances uh, cause us to feel or to give up spiritually but uh, but the gospel is telling us Matthew is telling us is uh, 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 blessed are the poor in spirit so uh, we have to appreciate the fact that God is able to sustain us he is able to uh, to encourage us and this is where education and doctrine uh, Bible study and uh, uh, comes in to help us when we are going through difficult times the Word of God comes to remind us that God said he would never leave you he would never forsake you and so we have to be encouraged in the face of adversity but that's what this uh, uh, teaching is telling us uh, by Christ himself so uh, hopelessness, powerlessness. Uh, uh, don't we feel that way sometimes that we can't control the outcome of a particular circumstance? We can't control the narrative and so uh, we find ourselves being without power to handle that matter but it doesn't mean that God cannot handle that matter. It just means that you can't. Uh, hopelessness. Uh, the first epistle of John uh, chapter 3 I believe verse 1 and 2 speaks about uh, uh, hope uh, confident expectation uh, and so many times even as Christians uh, we have to be careful not to give up on God and what he promised he would do even in the face of adversity so Jesus was telling his listeners that they would no longer be hopeless and powerless all they had to do was become a part of God's kingdom unfortunately the Jews were not looking for a spiritual kingdom instead they were looking for uh, an earthly kingdom and I just want to help us to understand uh, quickly here that it's very important that we embrace uh, the spirit of God uh, I would also remind you to take a look at uh, the first uh, first Corinthians chapter 2 we are spiritual people uh, and so I, I know looking out at the world and looking at the decay and the destruction and even the the news uh, 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 from the media that uh, uh, that things are not working out even around the world. Uh, but it's important to understand that uh, Israel was looking for a, 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 a army, if you will, or the type of king that. Uh, would come and raise a physical army, uh, if you will, to, to help fight their battles and things like that. But we on the spiritual side, uh, we are looking for the Holy Spirit to rescue us, to, to deliver us. We are looking for the power of God to intervene. Uh, and so this is not something that uh, uh, we can embrace without being spiritual people. We are not natural minded people. We are spiritual people. But the mistake that the Jews made, that Israel made, even as we look uh, further into book, to the book of Romans, uh, as Paul was talking about them in chapter 10, uh, uh, that they wanted to do it on their own. Uh, they would not uh, subject themselves to the righteousness of God they they felt like they could do it on their own in other words they could handle it based on carnality based on what they could see based on uh, uh, fleshly interpretation as opposed to uh, spiritual things so this was the the problem with the Jews that uh, they didn't recognize Christ so Matthew's gospel presents Jesus and his message as being rejected and sometimes uh, we, we really have to understand that when we reject Christ and his teachings, then we cannot draw from the Spirit. We cannot draw from the promises that God made uh, to his people because we are rejecting the knowledge of God. But this is the purpose of Jesus teaching these things to uh, break them down where these individuals could embrace them and would be able to uh, understand it so just as with the first one many have mistakenly applied the second beatitude those who mourn 
over the death of a loved one. Instead, the mourning is applied to sin. Uh, we all have felt the sorrow of our sins, so it placed us in a position of deep contrition uh, through Jesus' uh, uh, redemptive work on the cross, believers find comfort. I want you to look at James chapter 4, uh, verses 7 through 10. So a lot of times we have uh, not understood the teachings uh, of Christ in terms of this morning, uh, 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 the grief over sin. We should be uh, 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 in a mindset of understanding that 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 sin is a binding factor uh, and it, it causes grief. It causes us to mourn. It causes us uh, many, many problems. But, but the message of Christ delivers us. Uh, we have the victory through Jesus Christ. But the, the beatitude is talking about uh, 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 being... Uh, 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 having an, an attitude of deep contrition, godly sorry for our sins. So that reference to James will help you understand uh, that passage. But in the third beatitude, we see heavenly values in conflict with worldly values. While the world looks favorably at those who seek to rise by pressing down others, believers see it otherwise. God loves those who humble themselves before him. Uh, so to be clear, meekness is not weakness. Instead, it is power under the control of the Holy Spirit. When we allow the Holy Spirit to control our humanness, we will find uh, God's richest blessings. So again, as we unpack this uh, a Sermon on the Mount, we can see that your relationship entitles you uh, to power, to the Holy Spirit. Uh, every baptized believer has been anointed with the power of God. Uh, you have been uh, brought into the family of God and you have benefits. You have power. Uh, you have the capacity to ask God to intervene and be heard in your prayers. And, and the Holy Spirit gives us and sustains us uh, in trials and circumstances where otherwise we would be overwhelmed. It, it, it is a peace that passeth all understanding. And, and so while the world is in chaos, uh, you are at peace and you are at rest because you know that God is in control of your situation and he is in control of the situations around you. And so for that we have peace. So we can be uh, humble and we can understand that, that, that we are not weak, but we are under the control of the Holy Spirit. We don't have to uh, raise up, shout out, curse anybody out. We should be uh, 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 allowing and recognizing that the Holy Spirit is able to keep us. I want you to look at First Peter chapter 5, uh, verse 6. So, considering the state of our society today, uh, the fourth beatitude, verse 6, is most appropriate. Jesus called on all believers to seek righteousness across two dimensions. First, we are to seek it individually. We can only find true righteousness through our relationship with God. Second, we seek it within the society we live in. That means that we must ensure uh, we promote proper values in our families and congregations so that righteousness will spill over into our communities. This is huge. Uh, so, uh, again, back it to the reference that I made earlier about Israel coming out of Egypt and not understanding uh, who God is, that he is holy, and they are receiving all of these different uh, 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 systems, if you will, of laws and commandments and ordinances and, and all of these different things. It is to help shape the society. And, and, and God knows that we have lost so much today. Uh, in terms of our moral character and our moral fiber in our society now. Uh, 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 our churches have moved away from the, the doctrine and the character of God, which is always holy. You can see that throughout the book of, of, of Levit Leviticus, which uh, helps Israel to understand that they are now in relationship with God. And so even in the Old Testament, 
uh, Moses was saying to the children of Israel via God to be holy. So we have lost these teachings over the course of time and the communities and our society suffers because we are instead of uh, uh, leading uh, uh, by example, we are now following by compromise or because of compromise. And so uh, God expects us to live this thing out uh, this was Israel's um, evangelistic uh, uh, assignment, if you will, when they were to uh, uh, assigned or given the the promised land. God told them how to act when they got over there into the promised land, how to live and how not to live. Don't uh, mix in uh, with the Canaanite nations. Don't marry those individuals. Don't give your sons to in marriage to them don't give your daughters but they got over there in the promised land and they got uh, uh, they got God's message twisted and they didn't uphold the principles of uh, of God and so they were not the the model if you will uh, for the world and so this is what happened so this righteousness just simply means a, a right standing with God uh, and and we must come through uh, this righteousness through Jesus Christ in order that we might have peace with God and so after we have learned these principles then we're able to uh, live them out and I love the way the lesson presents this this is something that we need to do individually and it's also something that we need to do corporately this is why we go to church this is why we go to Sunday school to Bible class and we learn these things corporately so we can live them individually so I hope you can understand that here but um, and I want to read this again it talks about uh, we must ensure we who is we the disciples the people of God we must ensure that we promote proper values what kind of values uh, where are we getting these values from if we're not getting them from the word of God where are we getting our teachings from as parents that we might give them uh, to our children and, and then our children would give them to their children. So if, 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 if we don't do this, uh, if you go over into uh, Judges, I believe, chapter 21, uh, Joshua was dead. Uh, the judges are gone off the scene and but the Bible declares that everybody started doing things as they saw fit. Everybody start living according to the what to what they understood and it brought about national chaos. And that's what we have now in, in so much of the world. We have national chaos because we will not adhere to the teachings. We will not subject ourselves to the righteousness uh, that God is requiring and we are suffering for it. Our families, uh, our society, our children, our young men, our young women are suffering uh, because they don't have the values. But who's to blame? Is it is it their fault that they are living the way that they are or is it our fault that we haven't taught them anything? Something to think about. But the next four Beatitudes focus on our relationship with others. Jesus called uh, on his listeners to be merciful. Mercy is the opposite of judgment. While judgment gives uh, us what we deserve, mercy gives us uh, what we don't deserve. Because God showed us mercy while we were yet sinners, he expects us to do the same in our relationships with others unforgiveness all these kinds of things that raises its head uh, in terms of our relationships with one another we always have to remember where God have brought us from you and I uh, if God hadn't intervened and had mercy on us he, uh, in other words he took pity on our situation uh, and he saved us uh, we we are not fit uh, to be in life uh, itself we're not fit to be in this world but because of his grace and his mercy and because of that cross and that shedding of that blood and Christ coming into this world to uh, uh, to atone for our sinfulness before God 
uh, and we, we, we were fit for the wrath that was to come as a result of our sinfulness. Uh, but God stepped in right on time. So we have to move to transmit the things that God have done uh, for us and to us to, to our fellow man. Why do we have so much killing? Uh, why do we have uh, so much uh, uh, dissension among us, even as people of God? Why do we have so much friction, so much strife between us? Because we fail to reconcile uh, on the teachings that Christ, if he said to forgive one another, why are we saying that we won't? Uh, he is our commander in chief. He is our uh, savior. If he says to forgive, then that's what we have to do. Uh, this is all a part of the teaching. He told us to love one another. Uh, that was not a question. He didn't say if you want to do it. He said love one another as I have loved you. So uh, in the sixth beatitude, uh, Jesus called on his listeners. This is uh, verse 8. Uh, to be pure in heart. That meant uh, inner purity. It wasn't just enough for his listeners to obey outwardly. Jesus wanted sincere obedience from the heart. Uh, so from the pure heart, uh, good things uh, will come. I want you to look at Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23. Uh, while the bad things come from the impure heart. This is also in Galatians chapter 5 verses uh, 19 and 21. So uh, believers do not instantly get right at the point when we accept Jesus. So we continue through the process of sanctification, becoming more like Jesus every day. You can see that in Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 29. So to understand the meaning of the seventh beatitude, verse 9, we must read Philippians chapter 4, verses uh, 4 through 7. So believers cannot be peacemakers if they are not at peace within themselves. No one can go about being peacemakers without understanding what true peace is. So, of course, there is no way for believers to achieve peace without the indwelling power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, as back over in Galatians 5.22. But again, we can see the Holy Spirit's role uh, in life, in our relationship with God. We can see his role, his intent, his purpose. Uh, you're, you've not been filled with, with the power of God uh, that to, do, to do nothing. He is there to assist us and to guide us in every facet of life, whether we are up, whether we are down, uh, 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 whether we are going through various issues. Uh, the Holy Spirit is there, and he is also uh, there to help us with our relationships with one another. Uh, and I know sometimes it's difficult when we have been wronged and we feel like that we can't let it go. Uh, we can't get past it. It's too hard to get over uh, someone deeply wounded you, scarred you, lied on you, all these things. And I, I've heard them over the years, but what I always tell people, if you, if you find it to be a challenge to obey God, then ask God to help you to obey him. He will help you get over that hurdle. He will help you see past uh, what someone did to you. He will help you see uh, the real true meaning of why we do things to one another. Uh, because we are devoid of God's love in our heart. We are devoid of his spirit controlling us uh, and ruling. Or we are, we are devoid of praying and asking God to help us in our trials and situations. So we undertake these things on our own. And they present challenges for us to, to overcome. But, but, but this teaching, back to this teaching here. Jesus is teaching breaking these things down for his disciples to understand this is how you move this is how you get past this situation this is a very comprehensive sermon uh, where Jesus if you if you read this sermon in, in its entirety from Matthew chapter 5 uh, uh, to Matthew chapter 7 you will see that Jesus covers a variety of issues of everyday life and 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 how we have been taught wrong in, the, in, the, in that context how the Jews or how the children of Israel being, were being taught wrong by the scribes, the scribes and the Pharisees. But he's brought a corrective, uh, a, a direct teaching, the truth. This is how I want you to do it. Not like that, but like this. 
And so uh, if we will follow that, uh, we will be blessed in understanding uh, what Jesus is accomplishing here. Uh, but the people uh, that are listening to this, there is no room uh, uh, for not understanding here that, that Jesus is taking the time to reach into human history and to our everyday lives and explain to us how we can handle life. Uh, you know, I, I found this out um, some years ago, and I, I thought, you know, that I knew how to live life. Uh, but, but, but I found out that I did not know how to live. God had given me life, but I didn't know how to live it until I began to see God's word as instruction for my life. Then I was able to live life uh, in a way uh, that God might be pleased. But finally, the eighth beatitude reflected Jesus' realistic assessment of what awaited believers. Because Jesus' first coming resulted in God uh, and humankind reconciling. Uh, Satan was and continues to be upset. His evil efforts will result in believers' persecution and a watering down of justice until it's just us. Jesus wanted to ensure his listeners that even if such persecution resulted in their death, they need not worry. They would receive eternal life in heaven. I want you to look at 2 Timothy chapter uh, 12 through verses 15. So what does it mean to be blessed? And how does our understanding of this word shape our approach to the teachings of Christ? I hope we have shared that with you in a, in a way that you understand uh, what a blessing is and what Christ meant as opposed to what this world's interpretation is of being blessed. And our final outline is a reason to rejoice. Uh, again from the NIV translation. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Uh, rejoice and be glad because, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets before, who were before you. So again, people that don't know Christ have the capacity to do all manner of things. Uh, uh, all kinds of evil. Uh, but I like what Christ says in verse 11. He said they're doing it against you because of me. Because of the testimony you have. Uh, that you are my child, that you are my disciple. Things have taken on in your life in a, in a negative way. Uh, I just want you not to take it personal. I believe that's what Christ is saying. It's not because of anything that you did. It, it's because you testified about me. Because you uh, gave your life to Christ, all hell is broken out in your life. Don't take it personal. They, If they hated Christ rejected him, crucified him to, to, to shut him up, uh, what do you think is going to happen to you? What do I think is going to happen to me? If they cr crucify the Savior, then we know that we are going to be persecuted. We are going to be lied on. It's just a part of the nature uh, uh, of, of what we have come up against as Ephesians uh, chapter 6 uh, chapter 5 helps us to understand that we we are not wrestling with uh, flesh and blood uh, and so it's important to understand these things the teachings of Christ will help you even when negative things are happening we need to know the works as we have presented in this lesson today the works of the Holy Spirit and how his role is to be manifest in our lives we also must understand the works of the devil and how that is to be manifest as well we are in a war we are in a spiritual war your Christianity your faith uh, your belief system is under attack the way that you want to live for God is under attack where you go uh, in terms of uh, 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 how you live uh, in your community and at, in your workplace and even at church all of these things are subject to 
to be under attack because you have given your life to Christ. And it's a good sign that people can see the Christ in you. Uh, but I want you to stay your course. Uh, I want you to hang in there. Be encouraged and understand that God has not forsaken you. And again, for uh, uh, this lesson is all about what we are being taught. Make sure we understand what Christ wants us to know as disciples that we might be the kind of people and disciples that he is calling for. I want to finish with this prayer offered in our lesson. Merciful God, you have shown us mercy even when judgment was merited. We thank you daily for your eternal love for us. You have always been our hope when things looked hopeless. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So I hope, trust, and pray that we have given you something to encourage you today. And we know that you are blessed because God said you are. And we hope, trust, and pray that uh, until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again. We say God bless you.